Hey YouTube, Captain Mark here from King's Landing Sport Fishing and today I want to do a video that I'm going to call All Things Flashers. Uh, there's lots of different types of flasher and as you can see in front of me I've got all kinds of flashers and all kinds of stuff going on here. And I want to do a video today talking about the different uh, types of flashers. Some of them you may have never seen before um, you know, or used. Uh, but I want to I want to share uh, when I use them. Talk a little bit about the different flashers. Um, I definitely use some of these more than others, but you know I want to call this all things flashers. It'll probably be a longer video as I introduce you to the various different types of flashers. And then um, after I've done that, I'm going to talk about when I use certain sizes of flasher, as well as when I use certain colors of flasher. So there'll be a lot going on in this video, but uh, it's all about flashers. I like to say that I've got a bit of a problem when it comes to flashers. I, uh, I like to collect them. Um, if I said I had hundreds, uh, I'm not lying. Uh, anyways, let's, uh, let's dive right in. If you like my channel and you like these videos, though, don't forget to click on the subscribe button and the like button. Helps me out a great deal. So let's talk about flashers. So many different flashers here. Um, you know, I'm going to start off uh, actually with, a, uh, with talking about a rotator flasher. So... Uh, you know, the, this is a uh, this is a rotator. This one's actually I think it's a fish switch by Gibbs. I I think there's a whole bunch of companies that make uh, them this style. Uh, this particular flasher, what you'll notice is it spins around like a like a wind, windmill or like a propeller. Um, when you're using a flasher like this, here's one thing I'll tell you: they do not put any action on your bait. So, using this with a fly. Not going to really do much. Chances are that fly won't get bitten. So I probably wouldn't use this with a fly. You know, if I do use these, sometimes I'll use them with a spoon um, off, of a, off of a diver or off of a rigger. I've also been known to uh, daisy chaining a few of these behind, behind uh, each other and actually connect them to the cannonball and have them act as, a, as an attractor to the, to the cannonball. So that's, call it, one of the first ones I want to... Uh, I want to talk about. Next, I'm going to talk about, uh, you know, uh, another uh, another flasher here that's probably not uh, probably not too popular, but these are called a kite tail. These are really small. These are actually from a company. Uh, I want to say I think uh, I think Gibbs Delta might own them now, but the original company was from uh, uh, Vancouver Island uh, in British Columbia, and these are uh, these are neat. Because uh, these are like a really low drag flasher, so they uh, they actually make big uh, big O's in the water. Um, great when running, uh, great when running a fly actually. So I'll use these with your standard, you know, 24 inch leader fly. Um, those uh, great for those, and they also work well with meat rigs. Um, when do I use these though? I use these um, typically when I'm running with uh, lead cores and with weighted steel. Um, they're not too heavy. Um, not too much drag, they uh, they work quite well, but uh, not very common at all. I know uh, a lot of people look at me like I'm crazy when they when I have these sitting on a rod um, on the dock, but uh, absolutely have caught fish with these kite tail. The uh, the claim to fame with these is that they're they're next to no drag. So once you've got that fish, you're not fighting a lot of drag that you would with some of the much larger flashers with these little guys. And like I said, I'm really a fan of these. Uh, when running, uh, you know, junk lines like lead cores, way to steel, coppers. Okay, next, uh, you know what? I'm gonna go over some uh, some metal uh, flashers. So these are um, these are the Alderton flashers here, and and these are metal. Uh, this one's the eight inch, and I think this one's a five inch flasher. This this five inch flasher, I've done like an orangey pink color with a short leader with a fly. Something I would use on a you know five or six color for uh, for coho uh, up high, and then uh, this larger eight inch. Um, I like to use these. With, I like to use these with meat rigs. Uh, so I'll have this with a meat rig. You know, typically it's a smaller uh, smaller blade. I'll run a five or six uh, foot leader on this. But again, this is something I'll run uh, with a uh, with a lead core or copper. I will not run this on my uh, on my downrigger. It, you know why I like to run these on the uh, on, on the copper or the lead core or the weighted steel is uh, plastic's got buoyancy to it, and I, t I find it wants to float. These are metal, 
So they don't have as much buoyancy. So if anything, they'll actually sink a little bit more. And I find that helps uh, ensuring that my, uh, my weight of steel and my lead core gets down to the depth that I want it to be at. You know, on the topic of uh, metal flashers, not very popular on the Great Lakes, um, you know, are these. These are, uh, these are stainless steel, polished stainless steel flashers from a company out in Vancouver Island called Pete's. This is their 11 inch, and I think this is their five or six inch um, flasher. You know what, I don't use these very often. They have your standard, you know, um, action similar to like an 11 inch hotspot or Gibbs. Um, you know, the back on the back of these is just your plain polished uh, stainless steel. Your front, you've got your, you know, your lemon lime here, and you've got your green and glow. But again, these are something that I could, I could use interchangeable with an 11 inch. So that's, uh, actually, you know, I've got some more interesting stuff before I get into some of the common ones. So let's, let's go through some more of the interesting flashers. Um, the next flashers I want to show you, um, these are out of Europe. These are called a VK flasher, and you'll notice some colors trends here. I've got a similar uh, lemon lime uh, chartreuse and green on a chartreuse blade, and I've got a glow with silver and glow back. Now these, these are real interesting. So they're quite small. They're probably, you know maybe seven, eight inches. Um, I really like using these with a meat rig. Um, six to eight foot liter. These also make a big, uh, a big rotation. Um, and I find they work really well. I'll run these on a diver. Uh, typically when I run them on a diver, I want to run them on my slide divers because I want them stretched back. So I want them to have lots of line so they can actually rotate uh, in a large way. So I run them on my divers. I'll run them on my downriggers. I'll, I'll also put these out on a 250, 300, 350 weighted steel. These are uh, these are great. I only have a handful of these. I think I've probably got four or five max. Uh, I remember, uh, you know, fishing a tournament with my one of my buddies, and I was going to put out this particular glow one right here with a uh, a glow uh, meat rig behind it, and my buddy looked at me like I had four heads, and I said, "Just trust me. Let me put it out." And I think it was a matter of 15 minutes later, we had a fish on. So. Uh, Interesting uh, flashers out of Europe. The, the, this is the, it's called a VK flasher. And like I said, they're out of Europe. Now, the company VK does also make another flasher. This is called the VK2. And this is a hinged flasher. These things have a, a, an erratic action. So they've got the hinge, but they've also got a fin on the back. You can see here. So this one, chartreuse blade, um, silver and gold. Uh, real, real erratic action. Um, I use these again with a, a meat rig, relatively long lead, six to eight feet. Um, I'll run these on a downrigger, I'll run these on a diver, or I'll run these on a, uh, a deep copper uh, or weighted steel. I'm a, I've got a 400 uh, torpedo weighted steel. I'm a huge fan of putting this particular one here, here you know, with a silver and, uh, and the gold, um, out with a, uh, a meat rig on the back. Typically the meat rig is going to be, uh, it's going to have some glow and some gold in it. And... Uh, I'll throw this on. It's got a really erratic action. You can actually watch the rod tip moving, even with uh, with that much line out. You can watch the rod tip moving from the action that this particular flasher creates. So um, neat. I think I've only got three or four of these as well, but uh, a neat uh, flasher that I don't put out very often. But uh, I find when, you know first thing in the morning when the fish are aggressive, I will I won't be surprised if I throw this out the odd time. So now, uh, you know, continuing on some of the uh, more interesting, uh, more interesting flashers are not as common. Uh, I got a couple here that I will, uh, a couple that I'll show you. So first, I've got this. This might look like a spin doctor, but it's not. This is, uh, this is one of the original legendary products flashers. So I got this and I custom painted this myself with the green and the black dots. It's got, a, you know, a glow gas in the front. And I put a crush on the back. But what's neat about this is you'll see the fin. It's actually adjustable. You can you can tune this. So you can see I've, I'm spinning that around and I can actually tune the rotation. Because this this is a rotational flasher. Um, similar to like a, a spin doctor which I'll cover uh, shortly. But you know I only probably have half a dozen of these that I've picked up. Uh, you can't. I don't think you can buy these brand new anymore. Um, you know, the odd time I find them at, uh, swap meets and stuff. And when I find them, I typically, uh, I typically buy them. 
you know, on the topic of rotators, um, you know, next I want to show you um, a series of rotators. These are actually um, the Beckled and Son rotators. So, you know, I know years and years ago there was some lawsuits between uh, Beckled and Dreamweaver. I'm not going to get into that. Um, but, you know, similar idea, rotator, one big fin on the back. Uh, you know, they've come in three sizes. You've got the uh, the 8 inch, you've got the 11 or 12 inch, I think it's an 11 inch, and you can get a, a small baby one. Um, you know, I'll talk about the baby one here. So I like to use these baby ones typically um, on a lead core or a short weighted steel. You know, I'll put these with a short, uh, a short leader fly or a short leader four or five foot uh, meat rig um, when I'm running them with, uh, with a meat rig. So those are uh, those are some of the I'd say not as not as common, not as popular um, flashers that you don't see every day. Now let's dive into some that you uh, you might see every day or you might not see every day. Since I was showing you some of the rotators, like the uh, like the legendary products rotator or the uh, the beckled, let's continue talking about uh, rotators. And we'll go to the Team Dreamweaver Spin Doctor. So if you are a Great Lakes fisherman, you should know about the Spin Doctor. And the Spin Doctor comes in, I'd say, uh, three different sizes. You've got, sorry, four different sizes, I should say. You've got the Baby Spin Doctor here. Um, these are often very popular on Lake Michigan, used with uh, small flies for coho. That being said, I also do like to run these with a short lead meat rig on a uh, lead core or a weighted steel. For kings, we're in the, when they're in that top 40 feet, um, they can work exceptionally well then. These are a couple that I have rigged up for cohos. That's why they're, uh, that's why they're orange. You know, you've also got uh, an eight inch. So here's one of my eight inch I like to use. This is, a, this is an orange one with a chrome back. Um, you know, got a white one here, lots of, uh, Lots of different uh, patterns uh, available. You know, I've got a, uh, a frog pattern, 8-inch spin doctor. Typically when I'm running 8-inch spin doctor, I'm running, you know, 5 to 6 foot leader. And then you start getting into some of the larger, uh, the larger spin doctors. So they do make a 10-inch. This is a 10-inch spin doctor. This one's a particular one of my customs. It's a, a carbon 14. Uh, with a carbon 14 bait head and some glow and red flies that has uh, taken some nice fish for me uh, as well as then they've got uh, the spin doctor bigfoot here this is a huge one 12 inch spin doctor this one was new in 2017 like they didn't make this before then um, typically when I do run this one I'm running it down deep and I've actually got a video where I talk more about this particular flasher and I'll link that above right here so those are some of the uh, some of the, the rotator styles that uh, that are out there from uh, from team uh, team spin doctor. Next, I'll talk about uh, next I'll talk about some of uh, you know probably one of the most uh, most popular or one of the I call it the original plastic um, attractors or flashers. Um, super popular out on uh, the west coast, especially in British Columbia. When I, when I lived out in the BC, um, predominantly what I fished was, was this particular style. And that is your standard 11 inch flasher. You know, this is, they've got no fins on the back. They're just a standard 11 inch. Um, Hotspot make them, Gibbs Delta make them, Dreamweaver's got uh, one similar. similar. Um, you know, typically when I'm running uh, these 11 inch flashers, I'm typically running these probably 75 feet and below. It's a it's a larger flasher. Um, they have a bit of a rotation. They rotate they rotate on their axes, and they'll sometimes rotate this way, and then suddenly they'll start rotating the opposite way. Um, so that's that's part of the, the value or the benefit of these particular flashers. Uh, the action's not always the the same. Like I said, these are these are considered staples. You know, here's another one. This is the herring aid. This is a uh, Oki Big Shooter Herring Aid, another 11 inch. Um, and I've got a, another one here, purple with black dots in the back. Um, probably one of the uh, more popular um, flashers out there. 
uh, you know, just a, just a staple flasher. They also um, they also make that in an eleven inch. Sorry, in an eight inch. So this is again a Gibbs, it's Gibbs Delta eight inch. This one's a UV blade, um, but they you know lots of different patterns. I'd say uh, on the uh, the eight inch here on the West Coast, um, I find I don't find too many eight inch run when I was uh, living out there in Vancouver. And then the Great Lakes, this particular one, um, there's no uh, there's no fins. So not a super popular one here in the Great Lakes, but uh, I catch fish on this. You know, I will typically run this with a five to six foot leader. Um, and I have no problem pulling fish with this finless eight inch flasher. So now that we're talking a bit about the, uh, um, the 11 inch flashers, like the, you know, cult staple, I, I want to share something I've been playing with the last little while as we talk about flashers. And, uh, you know, these look like a regular Gibbs or a hotspot. But what you'll notice is, you'll notice that I've actually got, right where my fingers are here, you'll notice that there's a, a screw or bolt. And I've actually designed something which is similar to like that uh, legendary products or similar to like a, uh, a Pro King with, uh, with fins on the back or a Pro Troll. But I basically put on a, uh, an adjustable double fin on the back of these. And, and this allows me to have a more consistent, um, call it rotation. So something I've been playing with uh, the last couple of years, I'm finding it's working well. Uh, you know, my own, this is my own design. You can see right there, there's the two, uh, there's the two fins. Um, something neat that uh, I've been uh, using to, uh, to pull some fish uh, on the 11 inch, uh, on the 11 inch flasher. You know, we are talking about, you know, your regular paddles or flashers here. We talked about uh, a standard 8 inch or 11 inch uh, Gibbs or a hotspot. And then I went into my, uh, my custom ones with a, a tunable fin. That's probably a really good segue into um, finned flashers. So right here, I've got a, uh, a Pro Troll. This is uh, one of my customs uh, with a UV slick, black dots and a green stripe. And then on the back, it's got a uh, holographic, but what you'll see is this has got a single fin with a chip. And this is a, this is a Pro Troll. That is their signature. The Pro Troll signature is a single fin with the E-chip on the back. Um, so that's, uh, that's uh, uh, one of their flashes in an 8-inch. They do make these in an 11-inch. I, I bet you I've only got one or two in my whole collection, so I, I wouldn't even know where they are right now. Um, but I do have lots of these particular ones here. That uh, you know, here's, another, here's another custom one with glow and uh, like a, a UV crushed MBK style ladder. And then the back we've got a, it's a white lead with again, a single, uh, a single fin. These are both chrome blades. Actually a lot of mine are, are in chrome blades when I have them with the, with the fins. That being said, I'm sure somewhere here, you know, actually you know, here's another one with a single fin and a chrome blade. Uh, I know I do have some somewhere which are not, uh, which are not chrome, but I probably didn't pull one out right now. So. Let's see what I have behind me. Here we go. Here's one right here. Shard's Truce Blade. Crush Glow. With a single blade. The, uh, something else very, very similar uh, to this is actually, uh, this looks like a, uh, a Pro Troll. But it's not. This is actually a Pro King. And what you'll see on the back is it's got two blades. Two blades, no E-chip. Um, I've had tons of success with these. I find the action between this particular flasher and the Pro Troll, they're essentially a, the same in my mind. Um, and I don't really feel like uh, I'm getting less fish because of the lack of the uh, lack of the chip. Now, different people have different beliefs or theories on that. Myself, I'm not I'm not too worried of the lack of the lack of the chip on that particular uh, on that particular paddle. Now, as we continue to get into it. We're now going to get into what are probably some of my favorite flashers from a style perspective. So, and that is the uh, and that is the fish shaped flashers. So, you know, here I've got I've got a few different uh, you know fish shaped flashers here. You know, so I've got an Oki Kingfisher. I got a ten inch that you know typically would be like a big weenie, and I've got the new uh, the new hot fish ten. So I'm going to talk about uh, talk about these. I'll start with the 10 inch fish flasher here. So this one here is one of my customs. It's a, it's a green 10 inch fish flasher. This one is, uh, this is a more narrow flasher. Um, you know, the back, I've just got a clear crush, but 
you know, this particular flasher here, I um, I often like to run these on uh, on flasher fl uh, on uh, sorry on uh, dipsy rods. So I'll put these on my dipsy rods. Um, typically, I like a little bit smaller flasher when I'm running the dipsy rods, and I'll talk a little bit about that later as I get into the how I run a lot of these. But I run these in the dipsy rods. Um, typically, I've got them with an anchovy or a meat rig. So there's a this one's got an anchovy um, or you know a meat rig. Typically, five to seven foot liter on uh, on these particular smaller um, flashers. What I find with these is they pull pretty hard, but they don't have tons of action. So I typically run these with meat not a fly. That being said, I know last year on the, I think it was week one or week two of the silver salmon challenge, there was a large uh, fish caught on one of my buddy's uh, boats and it was caught on one of these blades right here with a fly behind it. So while I don't typically like to run them with a fly because I don't find they have a ton of action, they, they can pull fish with flies. But for me, I run these with meat. So that's the small, that's the small, uh, the small 10 inch and it's a narrower. Next, I'm going to get into the Hot Fish 10. These things just rock. These are a new flasher launched in 2021. I've actually done another video on these, so I posted up above. Um, but great flasher. Um, Hot Fish has them in a number of different colors. I've been doing a bunch of different customs. You can see a whole bunch behind me here at the top. A uh, whole bunch of different ones. Some of them are factory cover colors, some of my customs. Um, these are great. They're a 10 inch or 10 and a half inch, I would say. Um, they're wider, so if I look at the that first 10 inch I showed you, you can see the hot fish is a, it's a wider profile. Um, it's got a it's got a much uh, nicer action on it. I find um, I run these with uh, a meat rig. I typically run six to eight foot uh, um, liter with these, and when I'm running with these with a fly, I've got one somewhere here with a fly attached. When I'm running with a fly, I'm running them with a 28 inch liter uh, with a fly. These are, uh, these are great, uh, and I know uh, newer on the market, uh, already lots of Georgian Bay guys and Lake Ontario guys using uh, these flashers, but they're, uh, they're awesome flashers. I know they're going to they're gonna be a staple when it comes to salmon fishing. Uh, haven't seen or heard too many guys using them yet out in the West Coast, um, but you know I know I've got some West Coast followers. Um, get your hands on these. Um, you know If you want to message me, I can try and help get you... Uh, Pointed in the right direction. These things are uh, these things are awesome, and they're a game changer. Now, also, um, you know the larger fish shape. Call it like the originals here, the um, the Oki Kingfisher. These are about thirteen inches. Um, great action. Typically, I use these. I'm going to use these with a, uh, a meat rig, in the uh, you know I'm going to say probably seven to eight foot range. Maybe six foot, but I like a longer. I like a longer leader on these particular ones. Um, this is uh, this is one of the factory uh, factory Oki um, blades. Uh, it's super simple. Glow stripe on the front, you know, holographic on the back. I can put this out in the morning. I can pull fish all day with this particular rig. Here's another one of their Oki standard colors. This is their uh, this is their frog pattern. It's a glow blade, holographic on the back. And then this one right here, while it looks like an Oki Kingfisher, it's not. This is actually a Pro Troll Fish and Chips. So it looks very similar, but you notice I flip it over. It's got, a, it's got that Pro Troll signature single fin, and it's got the E-chip. So I've got this one here, and then I've got another one here. This is a, uh, a Crush, uh, a crush uh, UV with glow on the back, and you can see right there, there's that E-chip again. On the on the back of this particular flasher, um, very very similar um, fish style uh, fish style flasher, you know, another another one of the uh, a Gibbs uh, or Oki. Uh, this is a herring aid, uh, you know, 13 inch, and then we get in some of my customs. So this is one of my custom uh, UV slick uh, with a, you know glow on the one side and a great UV uh, a green dot pattern on the back. Uh, one of my staples. I've got. Uh, my carbonator, you know, white blade carbonator, carbon fiber, green and glow dots with glow on the back. And, you know, another one of my customs, Oki, black eyed peas, UV. So lots of different, lots of different patterns um, that you can either buy regularly from the manufacturers 
or either paint yourself custom or lots of custom guys out there like myself that uh, that whip up lots of different customs. So as you can see, there are tons of flashers here. You know, I've got I've got flashers everywhere in front of me right now. And this is just a small portion of my collection. You can see I've got all kinds of flashers in the boxes behind me. I love collecting flashers and trying out different uh, different flashers. But now that I've kind of introduced you to so many different flashers and talked about them, let's talk about when I like to use certain flashers. And uh, you know, when I like to use certain from a size perspective, first of all, and then I'll talk about um, you know some leader le leader lens, and then I'll talk about colors and when I use certain colors. So I'll start out by saying you know, it, my rule of thumb is closer to the boat, so higher close to the surface, smaller flasher. And as I get deeper, I larger, I make the flasher larger. So that's where, you know, you saw some of those smaller flashers I had here, like the, uh, let me just get them here. You know, I can't remember where I put them here, but you know, I showed you those smaller, those smaller um, spin doctors and the, small, and the smaller Beckled and some. So like, like this, like this Beckled here, or like the, um, like the, uh, the baby spin doctors, you know, those, these are pretty close to the surface. So I'm running these on five colors and six colors most of the time. They're, they're close to the surface. I want some action still, but I don't want the, the, the rotator to be too aggressive or scare away um, the fish. So that's where I'm using those, or that's where I'm using, you know, my, my kite tails. I'm running those up, up high, you know, when I start getting in that 40, 45, 50, 55, 60 foot range, that's where I'm going to, typically I'm going to an eight inch pro, pro troll. Um, I'm going to, uh, you know, that, uh, that non, that non finned eight inch flasher, maybe that VK flasher I showed you earlier because it's not aggressive. It does nice, big, uh, nice, big rotations. Um, this is where I'm also going to run uh, your spin doctors or your legendary products, you know, so that's when I'm going to run those. So typically, you know, I'm running an eight inch flasher in that, uh, you know, kind of 60 to, you know, 40 to 60 range is when I'm running typically an eight inch. Um, as I start getting around 50 feet, I do start introducing the hot fish 10. I find the hot fish 10 really versatile. I'll run that, I'll run this in the, the 50 foot down to, you know, 130, 140 feet. Um, it's not too big. It's not, it, it's not too aggressive. Um, so that's when I'll start to introduce the, uh, the hot fish tens into the mix, uh, around that, around that 50, 60 feet. And then as I start getting deeper, you'll get the, you'll get the theme here. That's when I'm going to run like the large, the larger beckled. Uh, I'll continue to run that hot fish that I just showed you. And I'll be running the 11 inch. That's when I'm starting to run those as I start getting deeper into that 65, 75, 85, 100 foot range. I'm now in that 11 inch flasher or the 10 inch hot fish. And then I start to introduce um, the larger kingfishers. That's when these start coming into the mix is as I start getting deeper and deeper and deeper. And, and you know, as I start getting 100 foot plus, when I'm in that 100 foot plus range, it's really, it's going to be um, the, Gib sorry, the uh, Dreamweaver, Bigfoot, Kingfisher, uh, Kingfisher 2, an 11 inch or a Hotfish 10 with some glow on it. Those are my deep 100 foot plus. And as I really, if I'm really fishing deep, um, I'm, you know, call it 150 feet plus. That's where I'm running typically the Bigfoot or, or the Kingfisher myself. So... That's really, the, you know, my, my theory and how I use the flashers, uh, depending on where I am in the, uh, in the water column. From a leader length perspective, you know, if I'm running the larger flasher, so I'm running the Hot Fish 10, I'm running the 11 inch, uh, the 11 inch, uh, you know, Hot Spot or Gibbs, Oki Kingfisher or the, uh, the Fish and Chips from, uh, from uh, you know, Pro Troll. I'm typically running those with uh, with long leaders. So here's uh, here's a fish and chips, and here's a Gibbs uh, Delta 11 inch. 
You know, I'm typically running these, you know, six to eight foot. I would honestly say probably eight foot leader with meat rigs. I do run these with flies sometime, but not very common. Typically, my flies are running on an eight inch, uh, on an eight inch flasher. Um, you know, when I'm running a fly on an eight inch flasher, something like this, I'm running that, you know, I'm running a 24 inch leader on an eight inch flasher. Whereas when I'm running meat on these, these larger, I'm typically about the eight, about eight foot um, liter on, uh, on uh, these meat rigs. So that, that's your, that's your larger flashers. As I start to get into the eight inch, like, uh, like these, like a, like a dream weaver or a, or a pro troll. Um, like I said, flies 24 inches meat rigs. That's when I'm typically running about, uh, you know, five to six foot lead. It's a smaller, smaller presentation. You don't need as long leader. Uh, that's where I'm going to run, uh, you know, five to six foot on these particular eight inch. You know, one thing I did forget, 10 inch spin doctor. So, there, you know, there's not a lot of 10 inch flashers. Like I said, there's the spin doctor and there's the new, uh, there's the new hot fish. As you can see, the, uh, the hot fish is a little bit longer. I think the hot fish is more 10 and a half inch getting close to 11. Um, when I do run a meat rig though on these, uh, on these 10 inch, uh, spin doctors, I'm running similar to like I do the hot fish. I'm probably running a seven to eight foot lead on the, on the, on the spin doctors. And that's really it for a leader length, unless you want to start playing around with some of the smaller ones here. Um, I think when it comes to, uh, when it comes to these baby spin doctors here, uh, when I'm running them with a fly, I, th I seem to recall from memory, these are about a 14, 15 inch lead. I do a video um, or all around coho and uh, steelhead offshore fishing that I think I talk about this and I'll try and link that above for you. Um, but that's, uh, that's with these. That being said, when I've run uh, when I've run these particular baby spin doctors or the uh, the baby uh, the baby beckles um, with a meat rig on uh, on short cores, I'll typically run five six foot lead. You don't need a very long lead. So that's it for leaders. Now let's talk about colors and what time of day and when I what colors I put out. So I'll start I'll start in the morning, and I'll work my way through. So in the morning, a couple of things. I like to typically have a, a rig down deep. And when I've got a rig down deep in the morning, um, it's probably gonna be all about glow. So I'm gonna throw something like this, like the Dreamweaver Bigfoot out, or I'm gonna throw something like, uh, you know, this, my carbonator, you know, uh, it's glow with black. You know, maybe going to throw carbon 14, again, black and glow, and this one's got a, uh, this one's got a glow uh, MC rocket in it. Um, you know, typically in the morning, I'm all about glow. Or I'm all about, um, you know, darker, darker colors. Um, you know, I'm also going to probably throw it like this. This is a uh, Hot Fish 10 Double Crush Glow. This is a great, uh, a great morning rig. Typically in the morning, like I said, it's got, it's got a glow or it doesn't go. And that's why even the ones you can see where I've got one side with some darker color, like the carbon, it's got a glow eye and the back has got glow. So that's that's uh, my morning uh, tip for you because it's it's dark, it's uh, you know it's often cloudy. We don't have much light. We've got to create the light with our uh, with our, our gear. And typically, I will glow these up with a UV uh, UV light or my boat. My under gunnel lights are like uh, they're blue light and they actually charge these um, really 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 well. So that's the morning. As the sun, uh, as the sun starts to come up, I'd say uh, I start to change things around a little bit, and that's where you'll see I'll start to put out something like this. Still got some glow on it, so I'm still adding glow to the mix, but I it's got some holographic on here, and it's got a uh, it's got a green blade now, so I'm starting to bring in those those UV colors with the UV blades. Um, you know that's probably around you know 7 a.m. You know, the sun's up, but it may be still, depending on the day, it might still be a bit overcast or a little bit cloudy. Um, this is a great flasher. I'll also uh, bring out my, um, my my UV6. So it's a UV blade with a crush glow. But on the back, we've got, uh, you know, UV slick with some green dots. Um, I start introducing UV as the uh, as the day starts to, you know, call as the day starts to warm up and the sun starts to come out. I want to start bringing some flashes into the mix that I can leave out um, for a lot of the day. That's where the UVs come into play. 
You know, I'll also bring out like, you know, something like this. This is a uh, Kingfisher um, Chartreuse UV blade. Um, it's got glow in the back, uh, but you can see it's got that, uh, it's got that lightning, that lightning tape on it with a nice, uh, nice sparkle. So this is a real great flash to kind of bring out that, um, you know, once the sun's come up in the morning, it can be really productive and I can leave this out, uh, you know, throughout the day, you know, I'll call it a morning charter until I finish around 11 a.m. or so. As, you know, if, if the sun really starts to come out, that's when I start to really flip over to UV and to uh, chrome and to holographic. So that's when you'll start to see something like this. So this is a, uh, this is a, a pro, uh, this is a pro troll fish and chips. Um, but you can see here it's, and there's no glow on this one. This has got a UV tape on a chartreuse blade, lots of bling, mated with a, you know, chartreuse um, head with a chartreuse holographic. This is like sunny day. I want to bring some bling. I want to attract fish in. Another one I have here. This is an 11 inch. Uh, I call this, uh, you know, I call this a club dubs. Uh, I got that nickname actually from someone I uh, fished with out west, Jason Tonelli. It is a um, chartreuse blade. It's got, it's got some green on it. It's got some transparent UV tape. This one particular one does actually have a glow strip on it, but you know, very minimal glow. Um, you know, this just, when you're bringing this thing in, it looks like there's a, there's a gold light in the water. Like it's got a lot of flash, a lot of, a uh, lot of attraction. I also start as, you know, as it gets really sunny, I may put something like this out. This is a, this is like a Captain Valium pla um, pattern on a hot fish 10. So chrome blade, it's got some glow, but you know, really start bringing chrome into the mix. Um, you know, more UV. And that's when I start bringing out um, patterns like this. That's when you'll start to see, you know, the Kingfishers with the holographic backgrounds. You'll start to see eight inch here with uh, UV on the front side, holographic on the back side. You know, I've got a couple of these right here. Really, uh, really good. As it as it gets sunny, they uh, they start coming to the mix. Also, like a, a UV UV gator with a gain chrome on the back. When the sun's out, you want to give it that flash. You don't need to add the glow or that light into the mix. You've got natural. You want to have the chromes. You want to have the holographics. You know, you want to bring out UV blades. So here's a UV blade with a uh, herring aid from uh, Oki. You know, it's got a got some great colors on it but you can see it's got some natural flash here well not natural it's got some flash here from the holographic that the sun will just do a number on plus this this blade is uv and will attract uh, the the sun's rays and will just glow um so fantastic um but that's really you know throughout the day as it starts to get sunny so when i'm when i'm starting out on an evening chart sorry an evening or afternoon charter and going out about you know 2 30 3 o'clock 3 30 it's all about the chromes it's all about chrome, all about adding in color. And then as we, uh, as we go through the day, as it starts to get, as the sun starts to set down, that's when I'm starting to put out, I'm putting out the crushed glows again. You know, I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting the glows out because I want, I want to have, you know, uh, I want to bring some light into the mix. I'm adding the light now with the glow. So that's a bit of, from a color perspective. Uh, another couple of tips I'll share uh, Lake Ontario is where I fish. Um, you'll see as I'm sharing these rigs, lots of green. We've got a we've got a typically quite a dirty green water, so the green uh, the green rigs work very very well. Even some of the rigs that don't have as much uh, green still got green and chartreuse dots on them. You know, another chartreuse and green. You know they work really nice in that green Lake Ontario water. That being said. If we uh, if we've had the lake recently flip over, and uh, the the water is a bit more clear, a bit more gin clear, that's where I'll actually start to you know move away from the uh, the greens and I go a bit more neutral. So that's where you'll see I'll run something like this, like just a this is a plain you know UV crush with a with a glow back. This works very very well in that colder water. I find. The herring aid here again. It's another great one with a, some blue on it. Works well in that uh, in that cooler um, water. I'll also use um, you know UV herring UV herring aid is great in that in that cooler water. 
And that's why I do add a bit more of just the, the UVs in general in that, in that, uh, that colder um, water. The other tip I'll share, and I know this is a long video, but I'm just trying to share lots of different information, is uh, overcast. When it's uh, overcast, especially as we get into into August, uh, late, or actually mid to late August, early September, that's when I start to add in a lot more of the purples. Um, I find purple works well um, later later in the season. Um, so purples are great for me on the overcast days. The other one I don't have, I don't have one here. The closest I have is actually this one. I find when it's overcast, I'll start to bring um, gold in the mix. And gold starts working really quite well for me uh, as well. So I've given lots of information in the, in this uh, video here. Um, but like I said, a couple of, uh, you know, watch the video. The great news about the video being on YouTube is you can click through and pick up the various different, uh, various different tips and tricks. But um, you can watch it many, many times. But what I'd say is um, as you go deeper, larger flasher, you know, when it's darker in the morning, you want to add glow. As the sun's out and bright, you want to bring the bling into play. That's when you're adding the silvers, you're adding the UVs. And uh, when it's overcast, you know, glow's still good, but don't be afraid to throw out the darker colors like the, um, like the carbon 14s with the black. They've still got glow on them, but these work really well when it's overcast. And, uh, you know, a lot of folks don't run this, but I'll tell you, don't be afraid to bring purple in the mix when it's overcast. So hope you find this uh, this video helpful. Shared a ton about flashers. It's really my all you want to know about flashers uh, video. Um, I love flashers. I'm a bit of an addict when it comes to buying flashers. Um, but uh, good luck out there. Hope you took something away from this. And we'll talk to you later. Goodbye for now.